Hi, welcome to the latest in Larson Davis's webinar series on environmental noise monitoring. Why calibrate? Understanding the calibration check and the importance of annual recalibration. I'd like to start by just giving you a bit of background about myself. My name is Carol Case. I'm a technical specialist at MTS Systems Sector. For those of you who might not be aware, Larson Davis has been a part of MTS Systems Sector since 2016. I have been with the company for just over two years, and I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Cincinnati. First thing that I want to talk about is what do we actually mean when we say calibrate. So I want to talk about field calibration versus factory calibration, and there's a lot of misunderstanding uh, with the term calibration. So that's, that's our first topic, field versus factory calibration. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk about is what is factory calibration? Why should you factory calibrate your sound level meter? Then we'll go into how often should you calibrate a meter? And then options for calibration. So people generally mean one of two things when they say they're calibrating a sound level meter. They either mean field calibration or factory calibration. I'd really like to clear up that terminology because there can be a lot of confusion around that point. Field calibration is sometimes called acoustic calibration. Uh, it's a process that you should really do before and after every measurement. It's a single point test of the system. So when I say the system, I mean the sound level meter, preamplifier, and microphone all together in the location that the measurement is taking place. And this test confirms the sensitivity of the system. Uh, it confirms it's correct and it will make an adjustment if it's necessary. Factory calibration, which is sometimes called recalibration or factory certification on the other hand, is done in a calibration lab. So it's a multiple point electric and acoustic test of both the meter on its own and then the sound level meter with the microphone and preamplifier combination. And it's done to ensure that the meter performs to its specifications. So I'd like to just touch on field calibration before we move on and discuss factory calibration for the rest of the webinar. A precision microphone sensitivity can be affected by weather, so in particular by temperature and atmospheric pressure. For example, a change in temperature can cause expansion or contraction of the microphone. The geometry of the microphone itself changes, and this affects the electrical response. So to compensate for this, a user should do a field uh, field calibration in situ or on site, in fact, the field calibration should actually be performed after the measurement as well for another check. An acoustic calibrator, like the one that you see in this image, emits a sound of a constant frequency and amplitude. So the constant signal that's emitted by this particular calibrator and most calibrators is usually one kilohertz and then either 94 decibels or 114 decibels. These may seem like odd choices of decibel level until you realize that those levels correspond to one pascal and 10 pascals of pressure. So just a brief bit about how to do this field calibration. The microphone is inserted into the calibrator, as you can see in this picture right here, uh, and the user initiates the calibrate tool from the menu of the meter. The meter will measure the sound pressure level that's coming out of the calibrator and make an adjustment to offset the measurement to correspond with the actual known sound pressure level being emitted by the calibrator. One note about that is that if you're using any kind of outdoor protection or windscreen, such as the EPS2116, which is shown here, the field calibration should be performed before installing the windscreen. The meter can be configured to apply a correction to account for the presence of the windscreen in your measurement. So here's another note about field calibration. Uh, it's very important to allow adequate time for both the meter and the calibrator to adapt to current environmental conditions before performing this field calibration. So you should consult your sound level meter manual for details on how long the equipment needs to be sitting in the weather conditions uh, in which you'll be measuring before you can perform the calibration. You should be aware that with extreme changes, for example, like what might happen when your meter has been in a hot car and you bring it into an air-conditioned building to do a measurement, this stabilization time can be as long as 30 minutes. Uh, the user manual for the Sound Advisor 831C recommends a stabilization time of 30 minutes for any temperature change over 5 degrees C. 
the calibrator that you use for field calibration itself needs to be calibrated. A common practice is to have that done every year. Free field microphone is designed to work in a free field environment where the microphone is pointed at the noise source to get the most accurate measurement. So when that microphone is inside the calibrator, the field inside the calibrator is known as a pressure field. This is because there's no traveling wave inside the calibrator but just a pressure change. It's important to use a correction between pressure calibration and free field calibration. This correction for all of PCB's one half inch free field microphones and most other free field microphones is minus 0.12 decibels. I made a note at the bottom of this slide that there's a video out there. The Modal Shop offers Larson Davis's products for rent. They've made a video demonstrating how to field calibrate a sound level meter with a free field microphone, and that video is available at the web address that I've listed here. So there's another term that gets floated around related to calibration, and it's remote calibration check. With Larson Davis's Sound Advisor sound level meter paired with certain outdoor preamplifiers, a user is able to check the operation of the meter from a remote location. So this can save you the hassle of a site visit, whether maybe the meter is operating nearby but it's outside in inclement weather, or maybe it's in a truly remote location such as uh, a national park site, you know, a trek into the wilderness. The remote calibration check is an electrical check to ensure the system is operating as expected. It's not a field calibra calibration, it's not an acoustic calibration, but if the remote calibration check shows significant drift, a site visit may be in order so that a field calibration can be performed. If everything checks out okay, you're in good shape. For the rest of the presentation, I'd like to talk about the second thing people mean when they talk about calibration for sound level meters, which is factory calibration. So factory calibration is done in a calibration lab. It's a multiple point check. It's done at many frequencies and amplitudes, and ideally it's done according to the full ANSI and IEC standard. So if you take a look at the chart on this page, the blue area in the chart represents the typical sound range of the sound level meter. Uh, the previous type of calibration that we were discussing, field calibration, is represented by the single red dot. So it's just a one-point calibration. You can see that in field calibration, a huge area is totally untested. In factory calibration, on the other hand, the meter is tested at many other points. Factory calibration is a complex process. This chart is a bit of an over oversimplification, but imagine testing points all through the range of the meter as indicated by the arrows on the graph. For just a little perspective on the thoroughness of factory calibration compared to field calibration, field calibration takes well under a minute to perform. Factory calibration takes much longer, potentially up to a full day or longer. This type of testing involves both an electric and an acoustic test of the meter. And so the result is two calibration certificates that work hand in hand one electric certificate and one acoustic certificate. And I'm going to show you what those look like as I continue to discuss field calibration. So this is part of an electrical calibration certificate. It's just part of the calibration suite of data that's available. This particular certificate is 21 pages long. But I did just give, want to give you an idea of what one looks like. So for the electrical part of the factory calibration, the sound level meter is paired with a microphone impedance adapter. That adapter mimics the electrical impedance of the microphone. We use a function generator to send a variety of known signals through the system so that the actual output can be compared with the expected output. A frequency sweep is done at several different amplitudes with frequencies tested ranging not only through the specified range of the meter, but actually also below and above the specifications of the meter. So in factory calibration, we're verifying the performance of the meter over the widest spectrum of operating conditions. The charts that you can see in this calibration certificate. Uh, you can see that uh, there are charts with the actual error in blue dots, comparing that against the upper and lower limits of error in green. In addition to the frequency sweeps, full and one-third octave band filters, slow, fast, and impulse detectors, overload detectors, gain, noise floor, and more are tested. Now, in the acoustical portion of the factory calibration, 
the meter is tested with a particular microphone and preamplifier combination, much like happens in field testing. Uh, that microphone and preamplifier are always noted in the calibration certificate, and this testing happens at a number of different frequencies. So this is similar to the sim single point field calibration, but it includes more testing points. So note that in the case of Larson Davis's calibration services, a full microphone calibration sweep is also available, but that must be ordered as a separate service. So I'm gonna talk about a couple terms now. I mentioned that factory calibration can help define the level of uncertainty of a meter's measurements. And uncertainty refers to the confidence that the measurement reported on the sound level meter is actually right. Factory calibration can help you understand the level of uncertainty of your measurement results. Often we report a measurement with a plus or minus value. For example, a sound level might be 62.1 decibels, plus or minus 0.2 decibels. Uh, uncertainty might sound like a bad thing, but in reality, there's always some uncertainty. So understanding the uncertainty of your measurement helps you have more confidence in quality, a quality measurement. Um, an accreditation body approves the uncertainty of a calibration to assure that there are quality measurements according to standards. Another word you'll hear tossed around is traceability or NIST traceable, where NIST refers to the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So what is a traceable measurement? Uh, when I'm talking about traceability, I mean that I know that my measurement is good because what the calibration lab used to measure and test my instrument is good, and so on. So when I say my measurement is traceable, I mean I can relate that measurement back to a primary international standard through an unbroken chain of calibrations. When you see that a calibration certificate says NIST traceable, it just means that the measurements have been validated through calibration all the way back to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST standards. Okay, so that was the what. Why would I want to send a meter in for factory calibration? Well, same as any other precision instrument, it is possible that the performance of a sound level meter can degrade over time. It's important to factory calibrate for a check that the meter is still in good condition. Uh, when the meter is regularly factory calibrated, the data that you've taken with the meter is more credible. When you present data to your customer, they can have confidence in it because they know your instrument is in good health. So the risk of measurement error is reduced and the factory calibration can help document the health of the meter. And frankly, a big reason for regular factory calibration is that noise regulations often require it. So if you are trying to comply with a noise regulation, part of that compliance is usually having your meter regularly factory calibrated. An example is the 2005 Noise at Work regulation in the UK, which requires yearly calibration. Uh, another agency that requires yearly calibration is OSHA for the meters that are used to measure employee noise exposure. Uh, in a similar way, you might be dealing with a local, a community noise regulation or or ordinance, and that may tell you that you need to maintain a certain calibration interval for your meter as well. Okay, so how often do you actually need to send the meter in for calibration? Unfortunately, the short answer is it really depends. As I just mentioned, the first thing you should do is take a look at any regulations you're needing to comply with. There's a really good chance that that regulation will specify how often you must factory calibrate. And then the second thing to ask yourself is how critical is the measurement? What is the cost of failure? So if you're using the meter, for example, in a classroom or training setting, it's probably perfectly acceptable for the meter to even be a half a decibel off. The, the measurement itself isn't critical. Uh, if on the other hand, you're deploying your meter to a remote location and you're leaving it there for a couple weeks or a month, such as uh, happens often uh, with noise monitoring in the National Park Service, you can see a picture of that in this slide, uh, you wanna know that your meter has been factory calibrated. You want to get the results you want the first time. You definitely don't wanna have to run that test again. It's the same idea if you're a noise consultant who's only been brought to a site for one day. You don't wanna to have to come back to town to make that measurement again. It's good to know that perhaps the most critical measurements are those that are used for legal purposes. So if your measurement is used in a legal proceeding, one of the first things you will be asked is when was the equipment last factory calibrated? So you need to be ready to answer if someone calls into question the validity of your measurements. 
So another thing in deciding how often to factory calibrate that you should take into account is how the meter is being handled. So you might use your meter in a laboratory setting while an acoustical consultant might carry it around in a truck and use it outdoors on a daily basis. Uh, you can see the, the bottom picture here. I had taken the meter up to our family cabin and used it to make some recordings of loon calls and uh, the meter sat in our boathouse with a dirt floor while the measurements were taking place. The microphone was outside, but unfortunately maybe that was an example of <laughs> rougher handling. My point in all that is just to say a meter that you're using in laboratory setting probably has different calibration needs than one that's handled more roughly and exposed to a dirtier environment. One thing to take note of is that ANSI, ISO, IEC standards are very clear that it's the responsibility of the end user to determine the appropriate factory calibration interval under the requirements of that user's own quality system. In other words, we actually can't tell you how often you should factory calibrate, so you need to check the regulations, think about how you use the meter, and ask yourself how critical your, are your measurement results. Having said all that, the reality is most experts would tell you it's good practice to have your sound level meter factory calibrated every year. So on to the final point, how or what are the options for factory calibration for a sound level meter? So I've already said you send the meter off to a calibration lab, but it is important to note that not all calibration labs are created equal. So not all labs are ISO 17025 certified, and not all labs test to the full standard for sound level meters. Uh, what does that mean? ISO 17025 certification uh, actually just means that a calibration expert has reviewed the facility and the calibration process and procedures to make sure that they're good. It says that the lab and the services are technically competent. Uh, your calibration lab at Larson Davis is ISO 17025 certified through the accreditation body A2LA. So before deciding whether or not you should use a particular lab, ask, and you can ask the lab itself, are you ISO 17025 certified? Is the accredited lab testing to the relevant sound level meter standards? Uh, do you comply with everything that the standard requires? You can even ask for a sample calibration certificate so that you can see what you'll be getting. And then one final note uh, is that Larson Davis does offer a service known as CalPlus. So I want to show you here just a quick rundown of the benefits of CalPlus. So it's not only that uh, this option meets the, the sound level meter standard, we're ISO 17025 certified by A2LA. We actually provide some additional benefits as well. So we do offer 10 business day turnaround with a rush service available. If you send in your meter and there are any firmware upgrades that have happened since the last time we've had it, uh, we offer those free and we'll update your meter to the latest version uh, whenever that's applicable. Your labor warranty will be extended for one year. Any worn consumables will be replaced at no additional charge. And uh, factory repair is available should it be needed right in our facility.